Hello everyone, Wolfie here, and welcome back to the next installment of Hero Deep Dive, where I take a hero from Gigantic and go over every single upgrade throughout their abilities and their clash talents and tell you exactly what they do, how do they function, kind of putting them together to for two builds at the end, and in some cases tell you what they don't actually do despite what the tooltip might say. Because uh, again, unfortunately, there are a quite a few amount of errors throughout the entire roster. And uh, well, I'm here to hopefully clarify and clear up some information that you guys may have. So this time we are here with HK206. So if you guys have not seen the HK Basics video yet, I would highly recommend watching that first because in this video, I'm really just going to be going over what the text and the upgrade says, not actually going over what the abilities do. So if you're not sure what each ability does, Watch that one first, then come back. It's going to be linked in the description below. So what we might expect from HK, as a ranged damage dealer, we would expect that all of his abilities essentially get just better damage-wise over the course of his upgrades, you know, providing mostly higher damage sources, perhaps some uh, ignoring armor effects, maybe some AoEs or just some extra benefits. But HK also has this neat little gem fortify where while fortified he gets extra benefits and there are actually upgrades that are not on his e but actually on the other abilities that give him certain things while he's fortified so you may you know if you find yourself being fortified fairly often you can actually take advantage of a lot of those upgrades not all of them are great but a lot overall hk probably has some of the best like general upgrades in the game they're all really, really good, but we'll get into that later. We are going to start off as we always do with the left mouse button upgrade. Starting on the left side tier one, we have a rapid fire. Firing speed increases by 15%. This is very simple to understand, very low investment DPS increase. Uh, that's damage per second in case you don't know, but all of you are watching are probably gamers, so you probably didn't need that explanation. Anyway, as you take it, you'll see that there is a damage increase. I'm just going to go over... Uh, do one kind of full round of his LMB until he's forced to reload. So that did 669, and then I'm going to grab Rapid Fire now. You see he's firing way faster. 871. Like, that is that is such a huge difference for only 15% attack speed. And again, this is very low investment. Uh, you could probably get this very early, and it'll benefit you out through most of the match, just because it's... It's just so nice to have, you know, like anything that increases your damage is definitely on the higher end of priority. I've always said this, uh, especially if you're a damage dealer, you kind of just want to do as much damage early, if at all possible. Next up on the tier twos, we have Ballistic Accelerator on the left side, holding uh, holding down your left mouse button while you're fortified, basically firing while you're fortified, reduces fall off damage by 59% at maximum while at long range. So this is one of those upgrades, like I said, it only affects while you are fortified. So if I go way over here, you can see this damage is fairly low. And then I'm going to pick this up, but you'll see it's still about the same. Each bullet is still roughly doing about the same from this distance. But now if I fortify, suddenly doing way more damage from way back here. So this is, this is very, very beneficial, especially if you... Um, if you kind of find yourself at a really, if you find a point on the map where you can fortify like fairly easily and you're not really getting disturbed that often, you could take huge advantage of all of these fortify talents. Not just this one, but just in general. Um, but this is really good for like holding uh, certain defensive points, sieging points. You know, this is probably an all around better choice of the two. I do, I do think that both of these are really good and have their situations, but overall, I think this one will be picked up more often. But anyway, on the right side, we have high caliber rounds. While fortified, again, your close range deals increased damage. So the damage per bullet increases from 28 all the way up to 37 while within 10 meter range. And again, this is only while fortified. And 10 meters is actually quite long. It is, it's it's a lip further than you might think. Um, 10 meters, I would say, is probably around here. Maybe maybe like here and closer, obviously. Um, but watch, just look at look at the difference here. So again, while not fortified, no big difference or no uh, no damage increase. But if I fortify up and start firing, very high amount of damage over a short amount of time. This is uh, this is something you could take advantage of. Now, the reason why I don't think that this is, 
I don't think that this is better than this one, just because this is a very high commitment upgrade because it forces you to basically be close, and that's often really hard to do because of the fact that you are a ranged damage dealer. You're going to be attacked fairly often because your DPS, your, your damage is just a huge threat. So you're going to be focused if you end up staying pretty close in fights. And since you're fortified and immobile, that makes you even easier to hit because you quite literally cannot move uh, or dodge. But if you find yourself like kind of with a good team that will defend you fairly often or um, constantly like trying to defend certain points on the map, this could be very useful. Uh, this is good for like attacking wounds if you're able to get in close or defending wounds, kind of holding uh, close quarters points like D on Sanctum Falls or D on Siren Strand. You know, like there, there are points that you can use this. I think both of these are really good. But generally, I think more often you're going to stray towards Ballistic Accelerator because you're going to get the benefits regardless. Like if you're... If you're able to, like, at a medium or longer range, you're going to get the benefits of this. You're going to notice this more frequently being useful. But that's really up to you. Back to the tier one. Now, on the right side, we have piercing rounds. Your shots now pierce through enemies. And this is one of, this is a, actually an upgrade that affects while you are fortified and unfortified. So this is, uh, there is some mixed opinions about this upgrade. There are a lot of people that like it. There are a lot of people that don't really like it. Um, I'm of the opinion that if it works for you, then obviously go for it. But this is what it looks like. So now if I position here, kind of in my crosshair, you can see I'm doing damage to both Gnosis and that large Motiga over there. And just to show again that it, it works while fortified, as he kind of strays over to my crosshair, I can now be damaging both. And... Really use your best judgment if you pick this upgrade, just because the bullets are not really super wide. Um, they're, 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 they're actually fairly narrow, like your LMB bullets. But if you, you know, if you find yourself fighting, again, use your judgment here. If you find yourself fighting in kind of narrow points and the enemy are really like stacking together, this could be really good if there are three or more melee in a single team. Um, kind of narrow passages, kind of like the ramps or the caves on Ghost Reef. Like there are a lot of points where this can be really, really useful. And again, low investment, like one point applies to the piercing and it's fortified while uh, it's, it's both fortified and unfortified. So that makes it quite versatile. Uh, but anyway, tier two on the left side, we have impeding fire. This is one of the upgrades that is fortified only. Applies a slow, which is a 5% movement speed reduction for one second, but it stacks up to six times for a total of 30% movement speed reduction uh, for one second for everyone that you hit. And since it's every time that you apply an LMB, it can be very easily uh, reapplied because your attack speed is so fast. But watch, again, while, while unfortified, only doing damage. Fortify up now applying slow you can see the slow text you can see the debuff kind of uh of particle or, or icon rather on on their person if you have debuffs and buffs showing which you should highly recommend if you don't have that turned on i, I highly recommend you turn that on in the settings show buffs and debuffs or something like that it's called anyway while fortified slows unfortified does not slow and you can stack that up super super fast because six shots is all you need to get the maximum effectiveness and you can fire those all really fast like it really only takes about a second and maybe a quarter to fire six shots like ha is a really fast attack speed. probably even less than that like a, a second and 1.25 seconds is actually probably too long like you can get that super super quick on the other side kind of in the same general idea um now instead of a slow it is a weaken so the weaken effect again five percent for one second, but now stacks up to ten times for a maximum of fifty percent weakness at full effectiveness. Now, this is again one of those upgrades that has some really mixed reviews, um, and the reason is because again the bullet spread is so narrow that uh, like the bullets are so narrow that you're really only going to be applying this to one maybe two per people at most. And even then, still, like, this can really, really work super well. It can actually, since it's basically permanent, like, you just have to be fortified and fire on somebody, and it's basically permanent, because, again, HK's attack speed is so fast. So if I go over here, again, fortify only. Normal attacks are not doing anything. But now I fortify, again, the floating text weakness, doing damage, maximum effectiveness, basically permanent, because it's on your LMB. Like, this is... 
this is something that works really, really well if you can find yourself, again, able to fortify fairly often, which is harder to do than you might think, because, again, HK really likes to be focused because he's a huge damage threat. And since you have to be fortified, you are entirely immobile and susceptible to any and all attacks because you literally cannot move. So this is this is one of those things where if you get value out of it, it can really go far, but it can also be super punishing because it forces you to fully dedicate to being fortified. Now onto the RMB upgrades. We have here on the tier one left side, charge rounds, hold down RMB and now charges on a full charge, buffs the damage. The damage increases from 355 to 525 pre-armor mitigation. Now, this is what it looks like. You can kind of see you fill up a bar and then once that bar is filled, you can let go and it does increase damage. This does not do ramping damage. Some some do think that it is like kind of a scaling damage based on how full the bar gets. No, it is like kind of like Charnock uh, charged fireballs. You, everything that is on that first bar, like until the second bar is filled, it'll do the damage as the, of the first bar. So watch, I'll only fill it like halfway, 325. And then I'll fire it again just like really quick. Like just tap the button, no charge at all. It'll be the same amount of damage. So wait for that cooldown. Same damage. So it is it is an all or nothing thing. You know, you have to be fully charged to get this damage boost, which is pretty easy to do because it charges like over a second. Maybe a little longer than a second. And it has like this really neat particle effect of the fire like coming out of the backside. And it's a really, really high amount of burst damage, especially if you kind of pair it with uh, maybe if someone is currently armor cracked or armor broken and then just huge chunks of damage all at once. You can pair this with uh, kind of with your mortar if I didn't fire it too far. <laughs> um, didn't quite aim that. But anyway, if you kind of hit the mortar, you know, they're burning and then suddenly you just chunk them with a huge, you know, charged up uh, rail gun. Just a lot of immediate damage. Really simple. Uh, again, low investment. You'll notice that is a pretty strong pattern with HK. He's got a lot of like low investment things that are really, really easy to tier one point into. And uh, it's super useful. And they really only get better. All right, next on the tier two now, on the left side here, we have armor piercing. Now, pierces enemies while fully charged and deals 50% armor ignoring damage. So now your now your charge rounds will both pierce and ignore half of the armor that the enemy has. So again, only while fully charged, um, the normal attacks do not do not pierce. So again, if I was aiming at the Motiga through Gnosis there, it did not hit him because I didn't have it fully charged. I will wait for the cooldown to come back and then I will fully charge it, aim at the Motiga, and bam, hits them both. And you'll see that it did a little more damage to Gnosis because I was ignoring half of his armor. Now, granted, that's only about 7% more damage, specifically to Gnosis, because he doesn't have a lot of armor. Um, so ignoring half doesn't really do too much for him. But the large benefit is that this now can uh, now pierce through. So if enemies are kind of in that normal, like very narrow, admittedly very narrow line of, of area of effect. But, you know, if you can hit more than one, you're immediately doing a ton more damage. You know, it's it's already good enough that it, it that it does fifty percent armor ignoring, but the fact that it can also pierce can be really really huge if the enemies all clustered together. So good upgrade. Next we have the parallel outputs upgrade tier two on the right side. While you are fortified, you now can hold down your right mouse button and your uh, your LMB will basically fire at the same time. Uh, so now kind of kind of while you are fortified here. Again, I'll, I'll show really quick. Uh, if you're doing just like this, you can't use your LMB at the same time. It's only while fortified. So I will do this. And then basically kind of Mozu has an upgrade like this as well. If, you, if you're if you kind of familiar with Mozu's upgrades. Um, but basically kind of it'll, it'll do by itself. You don't even have to hold down LMB. Just like so long as you're holding down your right mouse button, you're firing your left mouse button. And I believe these left mouse button shots will get all the benefits of just the normal LMB. I'll double check that, actually. I'll get the increased firing speed, and I'll wait for the cooldown to come back. And then we'll see if it kind of... Yeah, so it does a it does a fully talented uh, LMB, if you take this. And then as soon as you let go of the RMB, you stop firing your LMB, but you also fire your 
charged railgun shot. So again, really kind of good. Um, only works while fortified, so I do think that armor piercing generally is better. Uh, but really, you could take either one. I think both of these are fine. Now to the right side of the tier 1 RMB, we have hand cannon. Now fire is a cannonball that explodes on impact or until the end of its trajectory, doing 250 splash damage in a small 3 meter radius. On a direct hit, enemies are dazed, or well, it'll... It'll daze one enemy. I don't know why it says daze enemies, plural. It, it definitely only dazes one person on tier one, uh, but dazes for one second on a direct hit. And this is a this is actually a very forgiving uh, like direct hit area because the projectile is so big. Uh, now, this this entirely changes the ability. This is one of this is kind of one of those upgrades that actually fully change how the ability functions, kind of like choosing melee versus range for Ashlyn. Um, so you're giving up a much shorter range and a bit of damage, honestly, uh, for a small amount of AOE and the chance to daze someone on a direct hit. So this is a very, again, low investment upgrade that can be really, really clutch if you need to uh, kind of interrupt a very critical ability, like maybe someone's focus or just uh, like a Margrave leap, just fire. It is super fast, like instant, and it's basically hit scan i'm i'm pretty confident that it's actually a hit scan uh regardless but uh it might have a little bit of travel time like the the smallest amount of travel time but either way it's it's basically instant it is again very forgiving so this is a uh, this is probably this is one of my favorite upgrades personally uh a lot of people still like just having the charged railgun because it's more damage but i still think that this is super super useful in those situations where you need a, maybe a little bit more cc on your team but i really like it and the area is much larger than you think um there's not necessarily like an a visual indicator and i will say that it does less damage in the aoe i don't know it, it says it does 250 splash damage well, actually, hold on. Okay, so the direct hit still does 355, but the splash damage is a fixed 250. So it doesn't matter if they're like right next to it or if they're like at the very end, it'll do that 250 regardless. But the direct impact will still do 355 pre mitigation. So that's a uh, that's important to know. Um, and that's actually something that I didn't even realize until just now you, you're actually not losing damage if you hit directly with this it's just range and you're also getting a daze so this is i think this is really good um but this is like a very specific build <laughs> for for hk so keep that in mind as well uh now we have days for days on the tier two direct hits basically increase the duration from one to one and a half seconds uh this is a non-fortified upgrade so it works while fortified or unfortified and yeah just a longer days duration simple very nice you know extra days can really really benefit and for anyone that doesn't know uh, if in case you don't know what a daze is basically they can't perform any actions other than moving they can't cast they can't dodge uh they, they, they can really just only move and jump and that's about it so it's kind of like the equivalent of a silence other games would call it like a silence uh effect you basically just can't cast any abilities or anything that requires the use of stamina aside from running so then on the right side, we have Concussive Explosion. This is a fortified only upgrade, but while fortified on impact, all enemies are dazed in the radius. So you do not, basically no longer you have, you no longer have to uh, directly hit. If anyone is in the explosion, they get the daze. It's a one second AOE daze in a very sizable three meter radius. This is a very, very strong upgrade in my honest opinion. It does force fortify. So, you know, keep that in mind. You have to be fortified for it to be uh, take effect. But watch, just even from there, big days. And this this actually does show an area. So, like, that whole blue circle that you saw, everyone that was in that space when that hit is going to get dazed. This is very, very good, reliable AoE crowd control. Again, pretty sizable. Uh, basically instant because there's almost no travel time on this projectile. And you're doing a good amount of damage, like 301 to uh, Nasus there, about 200 and something uh, if it was an AOE or everyone else in the AOE. I, I really like Concussive Explosion. I can see the benefit of both sides, but I think overall I, I much prefer Concussive Explosion. Now on to the Q upgrades. Tier 1 on the left side, we have Mortar Love, which is increases the damage. 
This is the impact damage increasing from 165 to 214. This does not increase the burn damage. Something very important to keep in mind. It is only the initial impact of the mortar. You see that does more damage. And this is... Uh, I don't think that this upgrade on its own really provides too much. But having increased damage is always pretty good. Mortar uh, is a very large AoE. So this can be super, super useful if you maybe get it at level 1. And just kind of have it for those initial like first fights where... You want to have mid control, especially like on Siren Strand or Sanctum Falls, where you're trying to control one or one of the middle points. You can really get that um, super fast. It's just this nice little extra damage buff. On the tier two on the left side, we have Kaboom Box. This is a this is a general HK uh, fan favorite. So now applies a burn area in the area or kind of in the space where it lands. Three point five meter radius that deals sixty five damage per second. Now you might say, well. Wolfie it already applies a burn 65. Now this is this is true, but it only burns people that and like that take that initial explosion. So the area of effect it just creates like a burn field. And anyone that comes into that space will now get the burning. They don't take the initial damage of, of the explosion, but they'll take that extra burning damage. And this creates some nice zone control for anyone that comes in or is forced to move like through that field will take some nice extra damage. You know, this is, uh, it's very easy to kind of do this. And I think, I think because technically it's two sources of burn, this is, this is something that maybe someone else who plays HK more often, but I do believe that since it's technically two separate sources of burn, because the, the mortar itself applies the burn, and then the field itself, the field is also applying another burn. So those two burns are sort of stacking together, which means they're doing, you know, 65. Let's let's actually do this together. 65. Um, then that would be an extra. If it's 65 on the mortar itself, and then 65 for the burning field, the second 65 would re get re reduced to about 6.3 which will just say six for the sake of clarity. So it would do 66 pre-mitigation. And since Gnosis's armor would be, or since Degen's go on back armor, Gnosis would be reducing this damage by roughly about 5%. So in theory, this would do, I mean, what's five, what's 5% 5 of 66? Like, <laughs> like four or five. Um, so, I mean, in theory, this would do about, like, 61 damage, maybe about 60, if it if they stack together. So, 253, 324, yeah. So, it's 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 actually even doing more than it says it does, which is kind of crazy. So, this is this is really nice. I'm not sure what exactly math is working here. Um, it's just a nice large area of effect. If you hit everybody with the burn area, they're taking damage from the mortar burn and the kaboom box burn, like, separately. So this is really, really nice. On the other side, we have heavy artillery, which is, I mean, I actually really don't know how this upgrade works uh, because you're already getting, uh, you're already getting an increased damage buff from the first tier one. I think this just basically increases it even more. Um, so the, the impact damage goes from 214 to 297, which is pretty nice. It's it's almost 100 damage, more or less. Um, closer to about 95, uh, 85, rather. But still, um, it just it seems, it seems weird. I don't know why you would take this. And it's only while well fortified. So, like, Kaboom Box works, or Kaboom Box works regardless. Heavy Artillery only works while well fortified. So... I'm not sure maybe if there's just a, an error tooltip here. It does not seem that worth it to me. I, I'm I'm actually really not sure exactly what this upgrade does. It just seems like it it just seems like it increases the initial damage, but it might increase the burn damage too. Like that burning seemed like it was doing way more than it actually said it does. Like that's almost a hundred a tick when it's supposed to only do 65. So maybe that's what it does. This is Something's not written here. Like, something is not being explained here. I'm not sure if it's the initial damage. Maybe the burn damage also increases. But again, only while fortified. So this is this is a mystery. I do think that it just does more initial damage and higher burn damage. But only while fortified.
It also seems to reduce the cooldown by one second. Like, I'm not sure. There's a lot here that I'm learning with this upgrade. I don't know. Hmm. This is very interesting. Okay, it does still go on 13, so that this is also wrong. Okay, off screen, I tried it out and confirmed. Uh, percussive force, not percussive force. Uh, heavy artillery does increase the impact damage and the burn damage only while fortified. So that that is 100% what it does. I just I didn't know cuz no one ever takes it. Everyone goes kaboom box. Everyone loves kaboom box. I I genuinely didn't know what this did. And now I'm kind of curious why no one just uh took this because I mean, it's really probably just because there's no explanation here. Like it, all it does is increase the uh impact damage. Like that's all that it shows. But the impact is way higher. The burn is basically doubled. Like this is actually really strong. So, you know, Anyone that watches this and, and mains HK, like, consider this. This is actually a really good upgrade. Uh, but anyway, T1 on the right side. Now we have impact trigger. On impact pushes enemies further. So uh, it already pushed, but it only pushed kind of upwards and slightly away. This now pushes away, like very far away. So you can sign to see in the wording here, 5.5 meters high, now 7.5 meters away. So this greatly increases, like, the pushing power of this it's not a it's not a favorite upgrade like not a lot of people take this upgrade it's really only useful if you want to perform a lot of cliffs or if you need to like really really scatter the team <laughs> it's you know you don't really need it for the interrupting effect because the other like the base ability already just uh pushes up so it's not like you need to use it for uh it's not like you need it to disrupt like power channeling for creatures or for players um but that's basically what it does. Just a nice little pushing effect that is really far. It also basically makes the... It's not said it... Oh, apparently we can't fire through that. It's not stated in the upgrade or in the ability itself, but this upgrade also basically makes it so that the mortar more or less explodes immediately, like on a direct hit. You know, normally with the tier 1, normally with the tier 1, if you fire it and, like, hit somebody, it first has to fall first, and then there's a delay. But with the impact trigger, it explodes pretty much on impact so this is that's a neat little thing that uh, doesn't get said here nice little quality of life on the on the mortar on the tier two on the left side here we have percussive force basically makes the push even further so you kind of saw that normal push pushing about down there and then this one increases the push by three whole meters very very large push um but since it is a push it is not considered a launch you can really kind of use your mobility and get out of that uh, easier than, you know, normal. It's not super reliable for cliffing, uh, but it is super reliable for, like, really, really scattering the team if you need to or kind of pushing them off of ledges. Um, not even, like, off of cliffs. Like, maybe if they're on, you know, a high point on Sanctum, like maybe in the sniper nest above the river, or... Um, if you can somehow like push them out of the window post clash, like there, there, there are places you can use this. Um, but genuinely, like this side of the, in, like this entire side of the tree, most of the time people don't like it. Um, then we have speed loader. While you are fortified, reduces the cooldown. This is um, this is an interesting one, just because you know you look at it, it goes from thirteen seconds down to six. That is more than half of a reduced cooldown it might actually be seven i'm not sure if this tooltip got upgraded because of the or after the uh increase from that one patch a while ago uh but yeah while you're fortified the cooldown is basically halved but still pushes far away and yeah it goes on a six second cooldown so this could be this could be pretty useful if you like need to find yourself pushing very often i genuinely don't think that you're really gonna use this that much but you know it's there if you need it. Generally, I do think that you're better off just having more damage. Um, most of the time, as you know, most of the time you really don't want to push enemies away or like kind of have them scattered because if they're grouped up, then they're more susceptible to like area of effect damage. And then if you're scattering everybody, then you're still allowing them to do damage. If this was like, if I have these, ooh, if I have these made, uh, mortar like a launch then they would be like really really strong but since that doesn't do it either way uh it's not really the case and this one this one again is one of the fortified only sort of upgrades so really really dedicate like forces you to dedicate to being 
in a fortified position. But having like a mortar every six seconds can really be powerful if you, you know, if you're constantly like landing hits on two or more people for sure like you can consider this but generally i mean honestly the other side of the tree much much stronger higher damage output still roughly around the same of crowd control um so really up to you in the end finally last basic ability we have the e on the left side tier one we have siege mode while you are fortified you now are granted a 400 hp shield now if you're unaware how shields work in case you haven't seen any other uh if you haven't seen any other deep dives or uh, maybe the Rucker, um, the Rucker basics, where I kind of explain how shields work, shields have an 85, fif like 85 percent, 15 percent ratio. It is not a one to one damage absorption. So if you know, the shield will absorb 85 percent of the damage, and the remaining 15 percent will go directly to your green health. So in this instance, if you take 20 damage from a single source, uh. That would be 17 points of damage would go to the shield, and then three points of damage would go to your health bar. Um, kind of same caliber, you know, for a single source of 100 damage. Uh, or I'm sorry, 17 would go to the... Is that what I said? 17 would go to the shield, three would go to your green health. In a situation where it's 100 damage from a single source, then 85 would go to the shield, 15 would go to your green health. That's how shields work. So... Um, while fortified, you get 400 HP shield. It's actually a very huge shield. Like this is a, this is a tier one that, you know, th this is a tier one you could really, really consider if you find yourself constantly in danger. Like if you're getting focused and you need just an extra buffer of health, this could come in clutch. 400 is a lot. 400 is one of the largest shields. I'm pretty sure 400 is the largest non-ultimate shield in the game, aside from Rutger, obviously, because Rut like that's just part of his design um but yeah 400 is a lot but you just kind of see fortified you get that neat little particle effect you can see on your health bar you now have that extra little sliver of that bluish color shield and this lasts until it's destroyed like this will last until it's destroyed or until you unfortify so this is this is like this really nice amount of damage absorption and it it, it goes right away once you unfortify It'll go away, obviously, if it gets destroyed and you don't get it again until you unfortify, then get the cooldown back and refortify. But watch, watch. I'm just going to fortify here in front of this guy. Watch how long this takes to get destroyed. Like, this is a really significant amount of shielding. Like, that's that's a lot. Now, granted, if you're getting focused, like, obviously, that'll get gone. Like, that'll get chewed through a lot faster. But for the most part, like, that'll really win like a 1v1 fight almost every single time this is a very a very good upgrade uh if you really need to be a little more defensive with your hk build on the tier two left side we have shock absorbers increases the shield size and while shielded you are immune to crowd control so uh while you are normally while you're fortified you gain immunity to pushes kind of pushes and knock ups in a sense with shock absorbers, you now gain full immunity to crowd control, specifically hit reactions. So let's not get this confused. Crowd controls that are debuffs, like cripple, like slow or freeze, those would still apply to you. This is specifically hit reactions like launch, daze, stun. Those are the things that don't affect you. It is not all CC. So this is that's important to keep in mind. And it, and specifically with this bullet point, as you read this, it is only while you are shielded. So once that shield is gone, then you become vulnerable to crowd control again. But let's let's actually go over here and look at this. We'll go and see one of the uh, we'll go and see. I'm going to say specifically the launching Motega, because I'm actually curious if the if the normal fortify might protect you from launch as well, if it's just push. Is this the launch one? No, that's the push one. This is the launch one. So I'm going to fortify really quick. Okay, so normal fortify does not stop you from launch. It is specifically just push. You'll see that your push distance is much shorter. But now I take that upgrade. That launch is no longer affecting me. And I'm going to I'm actually going to wait here a little while and this this is going to be part of the video you can probably fast forward. I want to see if it's actually true, if it's only while the shield is uh there. So once the shield gets uh fully absorbed, I no longer have it. 
if I get launched again, it should in theory launch me because that's what the upgrade says. So we'll wait probably two more attacks and it'll be gone. All right, there we go. So I'll take one more hit and we'll see. Yep, so that's how it works. So only while the shield holds. This is a this is very nice. The upgrade gives 100 extra shielding, which is not like a ton, but it can be useful. Um, you know, you're not going to scoff at 100 absorb damage. But the the full immunity to crowd control while shielded can really, really come in clutch. Um, it really honestly, that's about two, two and a half seconds of just full CC immunity, which can really be a game changer. And since you're getting all the extra benefits of the fortify, like if you've got a bunch of talents or sorry, upgrades that give you fortify benefits, you're also getting the damage reduction, increased accuracy, you're no longer needing to reload when your LMB runs out. Like there's a lot of positives to this and it's 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 very nice. The other one is called Earth Mover. It's here too on the right side. While you are fortified, you also gain three seconds of frontal deflection. Now this is frontal deflection specifically uh, not wide, like not character wide deflection. There are some characters that do have character wide deflection. Some only have frontal deflection. So good to remember. And you'll see the particle effect when I show it. Also, um, enemies that are near you when you unfortify will get launched away. So they will get launched 2.5 meters and uh, somewhat fairly high, which launch is hard CC. It is a hard hit reaction. So this fully locks them in place until they land. That's, that's how launch works. But kind of come over here. We'll see. You'll get a little front bubble. Kind of covers just the half part of the character. Three seconds is not very long, but you know, if, if you you know, if you're getting sieged on and you need to have just that frontal deflection that can really kind of turn the tide, uh deflect like maybe a focus of some sort or, or like a really powerful ability. And then if you unfortify, you see is it's not like the longest launch in the world, but it's just kind of this nice little safety uh launch i do also actually no never mind um i was about to say i think you unfortify a little bit faster but no that's not the case so and since uh you know since the cooldown is it's not the longest cooldown ever like 12 seconds is 12 seconds is pretty nice uh of a cooldown so you can use this pretty often like if you if you fortify and basically unfortify right away just for that front damage reduction it's about a 20 to 25 percent uptime on that uh, deflection which you know can come in clutch um i think what most people generally would use with this upgrade is if they you know if, if you're on if you're on a cliff ledge and you just need to like super fast fortify then unfortify it's very unreliable but you can pull it off if the enemy is not paying attention to the fact that you have that upgrade that's really not what i would use it for I think if you're gonna pick, uh, I think if you're gonna pick this side of the tree at all, you would definitely take shock absorbers. I think that's probably, I think that's probably generally more useful. But both are okay. I think the tier one on this one is just really nice all on its own. Four hundred shield is a lot. All right, this long tangent, but anyway, tier one on the right side here for the E, called rapid recalibration. You now enter and exit turret mode much faster. Uh, the tooltip says 0. 0.3 seconds. I actually think it's a bit faster than that it's either that or this tooltip is wrong it does feel like it takes longer than half of a second to enter and exit turret mode but basically this just it it more or less doubles or it actually feels faster like it it at the very minimum doubles the speed that it takes to enter and exit turret mode uh, but also while you turn it up, like when you turn it up, your LMB gets 10% increased damage for those first five seconds, which is like not a lot, but it can, uh, it can add up super quick. This is like the big benefit of this upgrade is the fact that you can get in and out of your turret form much, much faster, which means that you're getting faster damage, like you're getting out your damage faster. So like just what a difference that is, right? what a difference that is to get in and out like i'm gonna untalent it and show the difference there i'm gonna do the exact same thing that i just did just look kind of keep in mind how fast that was and then i'm gonna and then i'm just gonna fortify and then unfortify in the exact same way like look how much look how much longer that took like i think this is i think this is way different either either this is much longer like to like the the base ability takes much longer to fortify or this upgrade is much faster so like I don't know it's just it's nice 
it is so nice. And you see you get that floating text that says you got a damage boost, and then it goes away after those five seconds. And five seconds is a long time for a damage boost. Um, like, only 10%. So it's not a lot, again, but still, like, this could be really useful. There, there, are, there are small bits of this of this uh talent that really have a huge impact <laughs> like the entering and exiting fortify faster is crazy to me i i love this upgrade anyway tier two on the left side it's i mean power differential increases the damage while fortified more so it increases to 20 percent instead of 10 percent, and the damage increases by three seconds so now the damage boost is eight seconds now this is this is nice. I do think that this is really nice. Um, you know, extra damage is really, really nice. An eight second damage buff is really long. Uh, so just this is if you can take this pretty like if you can get this pretty consistently, um, you can use this to your advantage. It's a long time to get a damage boost. And actually important to know the the buff will actually stay while you unfortify too so it's not only while fortified you just have to fortify to get the buff in the first place so you could actually just like fortify start shooting immediately unfortify and you still have that damage boost for like a good like six seconds this is actually a really really long buff i actually think it's longer than eight seconds it feels like it's longer than eight seconds but i'm just gonna trust that eight seconds is correct it's definitely at least eight seconds so this is really nice um so yeah, you can use this, but generally I do think that server boost is much better. So server boost is uh, once you unfortify, you immediately restore 25 stamina and you gain a very quick, very, very short lasting, but very quick movement speed boost of 40% for one second. I think the huge benefit of this is just regaining a quarter of your stamina. I, I do think that this is, uh, I, I, you know, this is... This did get like a little bit shadow nerf because of the fact that it feels like HK can't quite exit as fast. Oh, like you can't immediately fortify then unfortify like right away anymore. There is a small delay that kind of, you know, the point of getting that first tier one upgrade was to get rid of that delay as much as possible. And you still kind of can, but it's not quite the same as before like the game was released. And if if you've played HK for a long time, like if you're not a brand new player, you kind of know what I'm talking about. Um, but still, this is this is really strong. Um, getting a quarter of your stamina bar back and then that movement speed boost. Yes, it's only one second, but 40% is a huge movement speed buff. Watch, you just unfortify. You're so fast for that brief moment. Like, that can really, really come in clutch. And I'll, I'll kind of use a good chunk of my stamina here so you can kind of see it. And then you just undo, and then you, you have, like, that good chunk back. Like, this can really, really come in clutch. And you shouldn't get this. I don't think you need to get this early. Like, I don't think that you ever need to get this, like, before level f six, maybe five. But this can really, really be good um, if you just find yourself really needing to get out of there super, super fast. It's, it's very simple and easy to trigger. Like, even if you don't con – even if you don't commit to fortifying – like you, you quite literally just sprint, jump, fortify, unfortify, damage boost, and you just keep going. Like it's, it's really nice. I, I do think that that's a, a good upgrade. But you could really go either way now that it feels a, not quite as strong as it used to in the olden time. Power differential has some space for um, possible contention here. Lastly, going over the focus upgrades, we have on the tier one left side shredder. Your left mouse button deals 30% armor, ignoring damage. Uh, and this is only after you cast your focus. So this is this is important to know. This is uh, this is actually something I didn't know uh, until a couple days ago. Shredder is not a permanent... I mean, it, it's a semi-permanent buff. But it only s activates once you cast your focus. So if I, if I you know, kind of just move here, fire my full shot here does 684 and then if i take shredder and then do the same thing it should be 684 again actually hold on that's interesting it really should only be after you use focus so apparently it just works that's good to know so yeah you just get 30 percent armor ignoring damage that's really nice actually and uh important to know it is only your lmb it's not everything uh so 
something to remember. But this is, a, again, one of those very low investment upgrades. Uh, very, very useful if you find the enemy is stacking a lot of armor. So if they've got like Sven or Ashlyn or Vadasi, you know, Rutger has an armor uh, sharing buff. Zandora has an armor sharing buff. Um, if there's two or more heavily armored enemies on the enemy team, uh, you could you could definitely consider this. Um, I wouldn't say pick it up early. I would say kind of no uh, if the enemy is actually doing that and then commit to this. But it's it's very it's a very simple, easy to grasp concept of why you could get this or why you should get this in those situations. It's just it's a damage increase, like thirty percent more damage basically. I'm mean, uh, actually not quite. Uh, you're ignoring thirty percent of the armor, which generally around most situations is about like maybe maybe like six percent more damage it, it this is like this is one of those things where if they're stacking armor you're gonna see the big benefit of this it's just this is really nice it, it's a it's low investment increases your damage like you can't go wrong with it left side on the tier two now we have battle fury uh, this is one of those upgrades. This is one of those upgrades that are shared across a majority of the cast, or not a majority of the cast, but like in some of the cast. Uh, Battle Fury says on kill and death, you gain ten percent of your total focus bar. This is uh, I don't really like it that much uh, because you only trigger it if you get a kill or if you die. So you're kind of, you know, I guess you're not punished quite as severely for dying, but dying is something that you really should try to not do like ever. Um, unless it's just completely unavoidable. Um, but I digress. It, it does require you to get a kill. It's not an assist. You do have to land the killing blow. And 10% of a focus bar is like not a lot. But if you're getting a lot of kills, then I guess it can come in use. Um, but generally, I like you would definitely save this for the very end of the build if you get it at all. The other one is called Run and Gun. This is a very... Uh, <laughs> it's a very interesting upgrade. It is unique to HK. Uh, it allows him to sprint and use his LMB at the same time. Run and gun. This is... Uh, honestly, this is a really strong upgrade. Because normally if you start firing, like you just have your normal fire... Like your normal in combat movement speed. But uh, if you have this upgrade, you can sprint. You can keep moving like super fast. Like this is... Uh, this is really strong. <laughs> it's a really silly upgrade because he, you know, normally when you normally when you're sprinting as HK, his feet turn into those like those treads, and he rolls around. But if you if you get this upgrade and you just start firing, you're you're draining a lot of stamina, so you know you kind of have to be mindful of your stamina bar even more, more so than normal. But like you can really chase people super easily with this. It's a very silly upgrade. I I, I actually really really like it. Um, but yeah, this is, uh, this is fun. If, if you're not really using your stamina that much, if you've got like really good stamina management, you're not, you know, if you find yourself not constantly like needing to use stamina just to reposition, if you're getting jumped on, which is not going to happen very often, admittedly, uh, this can be very fun and useful. <laughs> this is a, just, this is a really silly upgrade, but it's also really powerful. So I, I like it. Um you know get it if you want to it just it's, I, I don't have like a really great opinion of this it's just kind of silly to me anyway tier one on the right side is called stonewall you gain immunity to critical hits this is uh this is an upgrade that i think has become less valuable over the course of time um because critical hits only do 20 percent extra damage which can be a lot especially if you have like cracked or broken armor and if the enemy is striking in the back like there are a lot of benefits to becoming immune to crits but since only like basic attacks can crit not everything can crit uh i've i've started to understand that this is less valuable um but if you are constantly under fire like a lot of pressure maybe if there's like an amani on the enemy team or a beckett or a mozu or people that just can do a lot of like good crit damage very very quickly you know this is good for this is good against trip this is good against taito like there are a lot of 
there are a lot of heroes that do rely on crits to do like a ton of damage so this can be really really good if you uh, are against them but generally i think this is kind of one of those moments where um if you find yourself getting attacked very very often and you just need like the ability to stick longer in fights like you can get this early um and you're immediately much harder to kill because you can't be critically hit so very nice very simple upgrade um generally don't think it's like heavy heavy valuable anymore but it can come in clutch anyway tier two on the left side we have iron skin you uh permanently gain an extra five armor so five percent more damage reduction on top of your 25 armor and you also get the extra benefit of after using your focus you gain 200 health for five seconds now that is it's not said here but it is current and maximum health increase by 200 for five seconds i do not like this upgrade i think it sounds okay on paper getting five percent damage reduction is nice uh but generally i don't think that you're gonna i don't think you're generally gonna see that much of a difference uh over the course of of time because hk you know he's got 25 armor which is a lot uh, but he he also only has 2000 health which is it's a lot more than the average you know shooter character but it's also a lot less than a tanky character so an extra 200 health is okay like it's since you are getting instant health like it can have that clutch moment where you're just getting like that extra sudden burst as though you kind of picked up a health orb um but for the most part i don't see a ton of value in this but just to just to kind of show it off i guess i really should have uh focused up i, I should have built up my focus before i showed this i'll just do that really really quick but you'll, you'll see as i as i take it um you're you're getting you know you, you'll see that the health increases like immediately your health will change like you see the 2000 maximum kind of in the corner above that uh, above the green health bar and then when I get the full focus bar and use it, he increases that extra 200. So you, you get it instantly. And you get, you get this little animation of those like kind of dancing green particle effects. It just doesn't really last long enough, I think, to be super valuable, especially when I get to this other upgrade. So, you know, it, this is, uh, it's okay. I would definitely choose the other one 100% of the time because here's Vitality. It's a passive 15% maximum health increase. So it's just, it permanently increases your maximum health. So HK's health in this, it, it, HK specifically goes from 2000 to 2300 health. And that's all the time. You don't have to have your focus. You don't like, like, I guess you don't get the extra benefit of uh, extra armor. Like you don't get that five extra armor, which is just meh. Uh, and you don't get like the instant burst of health after focusing but i would rather just have 300 health all the time right i'm sure there's some like crazy you know mathematician that is like statistically put together like oh when should you when should you take iron skin over heroes vitality like d does the differential make up for you know the fast focus gain that hk has you know thinking about like <laughs> like piercing rounds and and hand cannon or or you know armor piercing uh piercing railgun like there i'm sure there's a lot of things that you could fight back and forth between these two upgrades i just think generally for the most part you're gonna get much more value permanently from here's vitality because it's just a permanent boost like 300 extra health at all times why not why not instead of 200 every now and then with five extra armor seems 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 like it could go either way to me but for the most part i would just pick here's vitality i don't think iron skin is good okay, so now that we've gone over all of the ability upgrades now we're going to go over to the clash talents right every for everybody clash talents unlock at level five and you get an option one out of three basically gives one of your three abilities your right mouse button your q or your e a third upgrade so please make sure that you remember that your clash talent exists you get a benefit before clash and after clash so starting off we have heat transfer heat transfer reduces the cooldown of railgun by two seconds and post clash it increases the burn duration on burning enemies so enemies that are burning when you land your railgun 
any burning that they are currently being affected by will be increased from whatever the current duration, like whatever the remaining duration was on it now, increases suddenly to five seconds remaining. So this could be, what's important to know here is that this could be any burn. It's not just burns that HK applies, because HK only applies burn on his mortar. So, you know, Charnock can apply burn, obviously, like Margrave can apply burn, like any any character that can apply burning, you land a, a railgun on a burning enemy, that burn is now increased to five seconds. That's how it works. So uh this will be one of those this will be one of those upgrades where I'll have to show kind of an overlay video just showing the uh the burning duration increase uh on in effect. But if I take it right now, you'll see that my railgun goes from 10 seconds down to eight seconds. Very nice. This is this is the go-to upgrade for anyone that plays HK. Just very easy to understand why Railgun having a two-second lower cooldown rapidly increases your overall damage and burst potential, regardless of if you go charge rounds or the hand cannon. Um, and then getting extra burning. I mean, suddenly, you know, the this burning on your mortar, even as a base ability, is already three seconds, and then suddenly increasing that three to five. If you, you know, if you land it after, it's like if, if it ticks twice and then suddenly you get it back to five seconds, that is quite literally five or more ticks of burning damage. Like this is really, really good. This is definitely the go to for any HK build, like even even like the more defensive HK builds. This is by far the best choice. Next, we have Bombardment, which is the Q upgrade. Increases the burning duration for your mortar by one second, and then post clash buffs the focus gain of this ability, specifically this ability, by 40%. So don't get confused by what that uh, bullet point says. It is only the focus generation of mortar. Now, if you're landing a lot of like AoE mortars, like three or more people consistently, this can be a dramatic increase to your focus gain. 40% is a lot. So don't don't sleep on this upgrade either. I think that this is generally the more beginner friendly, beginner approachable upgrade. Just because mortar is way easier to land than railgun is, in my honest opinion. But if you can land your railgun very consistently, like obviously pick this because this will trigger. I believe that this triggers even like with AOE hand cannon, uh, or if you get the armor piercing per uh, multi target piercing on the charge rounds. Like it doesn't say. It doesn't say like on a direct hit. It just says if you hit someone that's burning, then that burning increases. So that's actually something worth testing. If anyone wants to go in and test that, uh, feel free to do so. But I'm I'm pretty confident that anyone that gets hit by any instance of RMB will get the benefit of heat transfer. And finally, we have double plating. Double plating. Uh, Pre-clash says that it boosts the frontal damage reduction you get while fortified. So the normal fortify is 20%, now increases to 25%. So just a little 5% extra damage reduction. And then post-clash, you now gain 80% degen resistance while fortified. Now, 80% is a lot. And if you find yourself against a team with a lot of degens, like literally everybody on the enemy team can apply multiple instances of burns bleeds poisons shocks like all of those effects you may possibly consider in that instance picking this up but generally i don't think that this is super worth it just because again it's only while fortified while these basically work at all times um like if you really really are getting super super focused and again a lot of degens maybe you can get this one i think it's okay i think it's a i think it's a solid like i think it's a solid talent that works very well um but generally i would pick these two every single time like 100 percent almost heat transfer every single time but those are how those three upgrades work okay so now that we've gone over every single upgrade and the clash talents i'm going to show you guys the two builds that I've made for you for HK. Now I have two uh, actual reminders here that I want to say before we get into it. First, like every other video that I've done, uh, every other deep dive I've done specifically, if you find a build that works for you for your favorite character, please by all means play that build. I am I am not at all saying this is how you should play 
this character, these builds, just in my honest opinion, are very easy to grasp and understand. They work, they're good for beginners, and you can kind of augment them the more that you play the character. The second thing that I will say, uh, specifically for HK, uh, I did say this earlier in the video, HK has a lot of really, really good upgrades, and a lot of them really work well, like super well, when you finally have all of them. So I, HK is one of those few characters that doesn't really have like peaks, um, kind of in certain levels. He actually just gets really, really powerful as the game progresses. Like he's he's a really late game focused character in my honest opinion. Now that doesn't that doesn't mean that he's like not useful in the early game, like not at all. But I I've noticed at least in my personal play with with HK and kind of what I've seen, uh, a lot of it feels like he becomes online when you reach like level seven or eight. Uh, so keep that in mind. So uh, what, what I'm getting at basically is that a lot of these upgrades for both of the builds that I'm going to show you uh, can be swapped out. Like basically anything between levels three and nine, you could exchange for anything else in the same like level threshold there, just depending on what you need for the character. And you can kind of say that for any character, but for HK, it feels much more impactful anyway this first build i'm calling the artillery expert build so with this essentially you're trying to remain far away as often as possible like medium medium long range uh to provide just a ton of multi-target uh area of effect damage single target bursts uh, in situations where you need to and just generally staying a safe distance as often as you can so at level one we're going to pick up mortar love and then level two immediately into Kaboom Box. This is an immediate, like, early level, just huge power spike because it gives you a ton of extra air area of effect damage, uh, a little bit of zone control with a burning field, and especially on maps where there's, like, a huge midpoint control, like Sirens or Sanctum Falls, you, you want to have a bunch of team-wide damage that increases your just power exponentially like immediately as soon as you can. So I think that those two are just kind of a no brainer in my honest opinion. Next up is going to be level three will be charge rounds. This is pretty much a no brainer. Um, this is really good for kind of, I mean, it, it almost lets HK perform like as this assassin role. Cause you know, the, the railgun has a really, really long range and not a ton of fall off damage. So, you know, if, if you, if you have like a skirmish in like a middle point here and you're and you're firing and you're landing your mortar doing a bunch of area effect damage to everybody and then someone has to run if you catch sight of somebody while they're running away and then nail them like most of the time you're going to confirm a kill so this is really really easy you could technically pick this up at level one if you really want to but i just generally like having mortar upgrades as quickly as possible. I think that you just have more benefit for the full team uh, with them, but to each their own. Anyway, level four is going to be rapid fire. Just higher damage output. You're shooting faster. It it affects both while fortified and unfortified. So if you, you know, if you find a little spot where you can fortify safely, you're getting every single benefit and every upgrade so far has not required you to be fortified. So this is like really, really nice. Just it's, it's easy to do if you have to remain mobile. If you you if you can't afford to fortify, then obviously take the benefits of being fortified, getting that front reduction, no, you know, no reload time. Really, really nice. Level five is where it starts getting a little interesting. I personally opt for uh maybe getting a little bit of a defensive upgrade here. And this it's kind of both really. Rapid recalibration, just having the ability to get in and out of your turret mode faster. Um or fortified mode faster and getting extra damage you know again the the buff that you get from rapid recalibration or power differential if you if you upgrade to that tier two that buff remains even if you instantly unfortify just just fortifying at all gives you that 10 percent bonus uh and 10 percent can be really really powerful if you start it but you could you could contend for this one but also you could argue for the sake of shredder by level of five, you really should know if the enemy is opting to take a lot of 
armor stacking upgrades which they really should because armor stacking is really really powerful in this game i i've probably said it several times somewhere scattered through the amount of videos that i've put on my channel um so getting getting anything that ignores armor um, is really really powerful and we also discovered that in this video you don't have to use your focus you just get 30 percent armor ignoring damage and since a good amount of hk's damage comes from landing lmbs especially if you want to like focus on one person specifically you can get like huge bounds from this so so both of these are about the same honestly you could you could really pick either one at level five and i think that'd be I think you could go either way. But for the sake of this, I'm just going to pick up uh, Shredder at level 5. Level 5 is also when you get your Clash Talent. Of course, I'm going to pick Heat Transfer because it's just the go-to. Um, again, if you're like really, really new to HK, you could get Bombardment. This works super well, uh, especially considering that you have the benefits of both of your Q upgrades. So this generates a lot of focus if you have a bunch of enemies that stand in the fire as well from, Mortar to, uh, from Kaboom Box. So you could really pick either one. But generally, I think heat transfer, you're going to get more benefit out of. Then level six, we're going to pick up rapid recalibration. I had that old, like, I had that whole discussion of if you should get shredder versus rapid recal. You're probably going to pick them up back to back unless you, you know, find yourself in need of something else. You know, I said at the beginning, a lot of these upgrades can be transferred either way. And that, that goes for both builds. We'll get into the second build after. But uh, you could pick up either one at any time i just think getting them back to back gives you the most benefits uh, level seven we're going to pick up armor piercing on the right mouse button you know allows you to now pierce your fully charged shots they also ignore 50 percent of armor so you're getting you know you're getting the benefits of your shredder now ignoring some armor your rmb is now ignoring some armor just generally you're going to be doing much more damage than the enemy might expect even if they are getting like a bunch of armor stacking so like this this is a good counter to like Sven or Ashlyn, you know, like I already said before. A lot, a lot of tanks are gonna not really like you uh, after these after these upgrades. So you know, teach their own. Level eight is when we're gonna get our actual first required upgrade uh, for Fortify, or for being in Fortify, I should say. I mean, you could count technically rapid recal, but this is the one that you know it only works while you're inside Fortify position, and it's gonna be Ballistic Accelerator. By this point, um, by this point, you're going to definitely be perceived as a threat. I mean, honestly, you're going to be perceived as a threat the whole time because HK is really, really strong, um, especially in the good, uh, hands of a really good player. So, you're at at this point, you're going to be focused more often, and you're going to really start to want to try to find those positions where you can remain far away. And the further away you are, you're technically going to be doing less damage. So you want to make up for that difference by getting less fall off. You're still gonna you're still gonna suffer a little bit of fall off damage, but with this, it's gonna be dramatically reduced. You're still playing more or less to full effectiveness, even if you're at the furthest point. Level nine, we're gonna get servo boost. Again, you're gonna be seen as a threat for most of the game. You could get this much earlier if you really really wanted to, but generally, like if someone jumps on you, then you can use this quickly fortify then unfortify or if someone's on you and you're are like if someone gets to you and you're already fortified you know if you're low on stamina then you just unfortify super super fast you exit that turret mode super quick you suddenly have a little extra burst of stamina and movement speed just to kind of make that difference and get uh you know get somewhere a little safer whether that's regrouping to your team or like getting to a creature so i think this is uh, i think this is really good and then finally you're going to get run and gun if you're if you're like super like managing your stamina super super well uh obviously this can really very easily confirm kills um and you know this this is at the point where enemies are going to have like a lot of those extra upgrades that give them you know either more mobility or just kind of better defensive options so if if you need to like really chase down somebody you can get this honestly you could probably get either one i think running gun is a little bit better um but if you're if you're not really managing your stamina super well, then you're obviously you're not going to get much benefit from this because sprinting consumes stamina. If you don't have any stamina at all, then clearly you're not going to be being able to sprint and fire at the same time. But this is really fun. I, I do like this one. That's my level ten. So you'll notice uh, you'll notice basically you know like I said, you're essentially going to remain far away as often as possible. This build is really really good for even if you're not 
like even if you're not fortified you're still gaining most of the benefits of this build like you're still getting you know your charged shots you're still getting the kaboom box area of effect burning you're still getting um you're still getting the rapid fire increase like there's there's only a couple of bonuses to being fortified and if you know if you find that spot to fortify and you're safe in that position then by all means like definitely fortify but you're getting you know that damage boost from fortified then you have oh, that was weird i must have like i must have let it go on accident because i definitely have okay there we go but uh anyway if you you know if if you have the ability to fortify up then you're gonna get huge leaps and bounds and you could be like super far away like i could probably have fired at that thing and i was still probably doing just as much damage maybe a little bit less than i was hitting gnosis there and the good thing about hk as well even with like a fully even with fully uh focus upgrades on like more damage output you still have 25 armor you still have 2000 health which is way more than basically any other range damage dealer like hk or sorry uh tarnak and oru also have 2000 health but they also have less armor than hk does so just hk has got really really nice benefits that a lot of people kind of sleep on like they don't really they don't really think about the fact that he has 25 armor all the time as for like replacements kind of for this build like if you find yourself really just still getting bursted down and needing to um like needing to be a little more defensive you could obviously replace um you could replace shredder and get maybe uh stonewall and then hero's vitality for immunity crits and then extra health or you could probably swap out rapid recal for the siege mode on the e so instead you would get that shield and then maybe the tier two on that one would probably be, I'd probably get the one that launches. I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head, but when you unfortify, you launch. I'd probably get that one at the tier two. Uh, but I wouldn't get both. I, I don't think that you need both heroes by talent. Like, I don't think you need both Stonewall and uh, Siege Mode tier uh, upgrades to kind of really go against the... Uh, potential of getting attacked really really often like this is this build is this build is all about the damage output and you should try to be playing safe right you know your your positioning is going to get you much more benefits uh and if you know if the enemy is a lot better at positioning and kind of taking advantage of your inability to position well then you could get those uh, extra that doesn't go quite that far uh but you could you could replace those extra bonuses to get that if you really really need to but for the most part, I think the build is fine as it is, and it works super well. You know, again, it's kind of having that nice flexibility of not necessarily needing to be fortified a majority of the time to get a lot of the extra things. And if you're fortified, then you even you even get more. So it's it's just good all around. Here is the TLDR of build number one. Level one, we're gonna get mortar love. Level two, we're gonna get kaboom box. Level three on the RMB is going to be charge rounds. And then level four on the LMB is going to be rapid fire. Then level five, we're going to get shredder off of the focus. Level five is also when you get clash talent, heat transfer. Level six is rapid recalibration. Level seven is armor piercing on the RMB. Level eight is ballistic accelerator, which is on the LMB. Then level nine is server boost on the E. And level 10, finally, running gun on the focus. And that's the build. Build number two is what I'm going to be calling the this is my point build. Uh, more colloquially, this is more often referred to as the quote unquote tank HK build. Uh, so this build, as you might expect from the name, would more imply being a little bulkier than you might expect and having like a large amount of zone control. This is kind of like, you know, you want to find the point where you're going to stick out and you want to keep that point as often as possible this uh this upgrade sorry this build also has a good amount of upgrades that have more benefits from being in um in fortified so you kind of want to focus more in being the in, in being fortified up if at all possible so it's a little less flexible in that regard but it still works very well um and it can be 
it can be really, really good if you play it correctly. Anyway, level one, uh, we're going to pick up piercing rounds. Your shots now go through every single enemy that you fire through. Again, like I said, when I kind of went over this upgrade in the first place, very narrow area of effect. The, the bullets are quite the bullets are quite thin, but if you fight on a point that is kind of, you know, this small enclosed space, this can get a really like this can be really big value for a very low cost. Level two is going to be debilitating rounds. Debilitating rounds only works while you are fortified up, but now every single shot will pierce through enemies and every single shot will apply a one second weakness that stacks up to 50%. The immediate ability to apply 50% damage reduction or damage output, I should say, 50% damage output for at least one to two people on the enemy team just for shooting at them cannot be understated. Like it cannot be overstated. That is so insanely powerful. This is something, again, I, I, I said this as well when I went over this upgrade. This is something that has been under contention for a while there are a lot of <laughs> there are a lot of really good veteran players that like this upgrade there are a lot of really good veteran players that do not like this upgrade so to each their own i think that this is really really good um and it works well for this build but i will say overall you're technically going to be losing a lot of damage just because the faster firing works a lot better this is a really good um this is really good for holding like Siren Strand. This is a really good for holding uh, post Clash C on uh, on Sanctum Falls. This is really good for controlling uh, either ramp on Ghost Reef. Like this is a this this is an interesting build. I really really like it, and it all kind of relies around making the enemy weaker while you're basically just free firing from your solitary fortified position. You know, whether you're in the front or in the back, so long as you're hitting at least two people, like you're doing a lot for your for your team right now. Level three is going to be Siege Mode. Siege Mode is a no-brainer. You'll get a 400 health shield for fortifying up. You're going to be fortifying up fairly often, so you might as well get a little bit of extra buffer health. You also get that frontal damage reduction just for being fortified, even if the shield gets destroyed, because that's just what the E ability does. So 20% front damage reduction, increased accuracy. Now you don't have to reload while all of your shots are now piercing through everybody and weakening them. I mean, you can, you can kind of see where this is going. Um, now level four and five, you could argue between two things. Level four and five, you could get mortar love into Kaboom box for more AOE damage, or you could go into hand cannon and concussive explosion for more uh, crowd control. Now, I personally, um, in most cases, would probably go for Hand Cannon and Concussive Explosion just because having an AoE Daze can, like, really be super beneficial. Um, this is, this again, like I said, there's a lot of upgrades in this build that require you to be fortified to get their full benefit. Just imagine, if you will, for me, a bunch of enemies are charging at you on a point that you control, you fortify up, you start firing through everybody. Now everybody is weakened and taking a bunch of damage. And then you just fire your RMB. Now everyone's dazed as they're trying to come after you. you you've already like stalled so much time for your team to get to where you are. Or for your team to fight back. And your team has basically taken no damage at this point. I just... This is... It's really, really... It, it's really understated. But it, it can only work under certain conditions. So kind of take it with a grain of salt. So that, for this for this sake, it's level four and five will be hand cannon concuss uh, concussive explosion. Level five is also when you get your clash talent. I think either one could go here. Um, bombardment can be really good if the enemy just kind of groups up. Obviously, getting extra focus gain, having the ability to burn for a little bit longer can make up for the damage deficit that you're not getting because you're not getting like a lot of damage upgrades with this build so this can make up for the damage deficit but also since you have now an aoe dazing like you have an aoe dazing right mouse button this can now burn a bunch of people for very very long so like both of these can go like really really far um 
Your focus is also really strong. I think generally most of the time I'm going to actually lean towards bombardment with this build, but you could go either one. For the for the sake of this build, though, I'll just go for bombardment and say that will be the one that you might pick. But you you could really get either one. It just it doesn't really matter. It's one of these two. And again, with the with the fact as well that this is a more tanky focus build, you could get double plating if you really need to. Um, I just I don't think that this is worth it in the long run. Like 80% degen resistance is a lot. 25% frontal damage reduction is also quite a lot. But you still in the end you still want to be doing damage if at all possible. You know, regardless of how tanky you end up with this build, you still kind of want to be a damage threat because that's just how HK is you know, that's his role as a character. You just kind of want him to be doing damage either way. So I'll take Bombardment for this. Level 6, we're going to pick up Stonewall. Gain immunity to critical hits. Pretty easy to understand why. Level 7 and 8 are going to be taking up the remaining uh, two of the of the upgrades that you didn't take earlier. So remember, 4 or 5, we took Concussive Explosion. Uh, if you went 4 or 5 to get Mortar Love Kaboom Box, then at 7 and 8, you would take concussive explosion or uh the hand cannon in a concussive explosion so mortar lev and kaboom box will be our seven and eight level nine is going to be hero's vitality for just increased extra health 300 extra health at all times now you're immune to crits i mean you're way bulkier than people might think with this and then finally we'll get shock absorbers at level 10 Shock Absorbers increase your shield now to 500 instead of just 400, and then you're fully immune to all crowd control. So you're going to be a problem. You're doing a bunch of AoE. You're reducing enemy damage, and uh, you're more or less unkillable, even if you don't have a support on you. Like this is a, this is a good. <laughs> I like I, I understand why a bunch of people don't think that this is a good build, but I genuinely like this build. Um. It's it's one of those things where you really have to play test with it to kind of see how it works like in succession. And again, one of those builds that doesn't really feel like it actually comes online until you reach later levels. Like you you feel good with this build kind of early. Like you have those moments where you're reducing damage and you're doing some nice AOE crowd control. But then when you reach like level eight and nine, you suddenly find yourself like fully online and totally unkillable and it's just like it's just it's just so much fun so that's the build so i've i already kind of explained how it works fully like if there's like a bunch of enemies chasing after me i fortify up in wherever i am i suddenly have 500 extra health like look at my health right now i have 2800 health as a range damage dealer this is this is insane it's just like you have 2300 green health you now have 500 shields like, you are tankier than Rutger right now. Like, mathematically speaking. Especially with the weakness. If someone goes on you, you do not lose a fight. You do not lose a 1-1-1 one, one, one right now. Even if, you know, there's a there's a talent that some uh, characters have called Bloody Minded that gives them immunity to the weakness debuff. Even with that, I don't think that you're losing any fight here. Because you've got the CC with your Daze. You know, you've got the AoE Mortar. Applying Burning. It just like there's there's so many positives to this build, whether you're fighting one person or fighting a group of people. It just like I I, <laughs> I I really wish more people went a build like this because I I genuinely think that there is more to it than people uh, expect. Um, like HK has this ability to be super super tanky, kind of unexpectedly tanky, and a lot of people don't utilize it. But I also understand the kind of safety of having the first build and being far away and just doing tons of damage from a distance like both builds are fine it's really like in the end it's really up to you which one that you want to build but i think both builds are really good and i, I wish more people went like the tank k build anyway enough of my rambling this is the tldr of build number two so level one is going to be piercing rounds on the lmb level two will be debilitating rounds also on the lmb and then level three is siege mode Level four is hand cannon, or you could get a uh, mortar love. But for this build, we'll get hand cannon and concussive force. Level five is going, or sorry, level five. Also, you'll get your clash talent, which we're going to pick bombardment for this sake. 
You could also get Heat Transfer. Both are fine, but I'm going to get Bombardment. Level 6 is going to be Stonefall. Level 7 will be Mortar Love into Kaboom Box at level 8. Then level 9 is Heroes of Vitality. And level 10 is Shock Absorbers. And that's the build. So that is it for the HK206 Deep Dive. If you enjoyed watching, make sure to like and share the video, of course. Leave a thumbs up. Leave comments if you so desire. I do enjoy talking with you guys. I know it's been a while since I made a deep dive. Again, I'm very sorry about that. These deep dives do take a very long time, and I have been busy recently, but I am trying to get them out as quickly as possible for you guys, and hopefully in the near future, a lot more will come a lot faster. But uh, if you learn something new, also make sure just, you know, to to leave a comment and say like, hey, that thank you for thank for telling me about this. Or, you know, there, there, there are some deep dives that people left comments saying like, hey, this is how actually how this works. And I appreciate that as well. So if you know more about HK than I do, by all means, I am not a master. I just, you know, kind of know certain things and I'm taking what I've experienced and sharing it with you all. Anyway, rambling aside. Once again, thank you for watching. I will see you guys in the next one. Have a good day.